Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Muriel and I'm a food photographer, recipe developer and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes and personal growth. And in today's video, we're going to be doing something that was suggested by actually one of you guys and it's going to be shooting one setup with three different cameras. So I'll be shooting this double chocolate zucchini bread with my Canon ADD, which is the camera that I use for all of my work, as well as my Fuji X100V, which is the camera that I use when I go on the streets, take photos of nature, I bring along with me on travels, and finally with my phone. And so after we've shot all these images, we'll be bringing them into Lightroom, editing them, and looking at the differences between all the different images. So if you're interested in this topic, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. My zucchini bread is out of the oven and it's cooling off, so it's the perfect time for me to start setting up my scene. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and then I'll walk you through the styling components of my shot. And then we'll start shooting. I'm going to start with my Canon ADD, then move to my Fuji X100V and finally shoot with my phone. So let's jump right in. So in order to set up my scene, I put my Canon ADD on my tripod and put the camera on live view so that I could see exactly what my scene would look like with uh, the 50 millimeter lens on. As styling elements, I put a little bit of cacao powder. I put some cups as well in the back in order to add a little bit of height. Also, I used a black foam board to block a little bit of the light coming in from the right of the scene to create a little bit of shadows in the back of my scene. As you can see, I also tried putting some spoons in the foreground in order to add a little bit of depth in the front of the image, but that wasn't really working out, so I kind of scratched that idea. So this is what my scene ended up looking like. I decided to add an extra black little cup in the back to add a little bit more height than with just a beige cup. In terms of lighting, I used a little diffuser here because there was some hard light that was coming in from the window and I used some black foam boards to block off the light that was coming in from all the other windows in my kitchen. Just before we start shooting, I'm just gonna walk you quickly through the gear that I'm going to be using. As I mentioned, the first camera I'll be using is my Canon ADD. I'm also going to be using with it my Canon 50mm f1.8 lens. Um, I'm going to capture a few different angles with this lens and camera before I switch to my next camera, which is my Fuji X100V. This camera comes with a fixed lens. This lens is 23 millimeters, so it's a very wide angle lens. Um, so I'm really going to have to come really close with this camera in order to capture a similar type of angle as with my other lens. And then after I'm done with this one, I will finally shoot with my iPhone. I have an iPhone XR. I'll probably be shooting in portrait mode just to have a little bit of that depth of field effect. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it um, once we get to that part. So when shooting with my Canon camera, I first shot a couple of images on my tripod, then shifted to freehand shooting. When I was shooting freehand, I was mostly shooting in automatic focus, shifting my focus around depending on the angle that I was shooting at. Then when I was satisfied with the shots that I got with my Canon camera, I moved to my Fuji camera and tried to shoot similar type of angles in order to have a good comparison of shots between different cameras. Finally, I shot the same scene with my phone, again, trying to get similar types of angles. When I was shooting more straight on photos, I tried to shoot in portrait mode in order to have just a little bit of depth of field, to have a little bit of a blurry background in uh, the back and have the front more in focus. Well, that was an experience. It was my first time actually using my three different cameras for one single setup. And it was so interesting to really see how, depending on the camera that I was using, the photo that I was getting in the end was not exactly the same. So before even starting to look at what the photos looked like, I wanna talk a little bit about the distortion. So when I was using my Canon ADD with the 50 millimeter lens, I noticed that there was no distortion. The image looked really flat. It was beautiful because the zucchini bread appeared much bigger and it took up more of the space in my image. Whereas when I was shooting with my Fuji camera and my phone camera, which both have um, wider lenses, 
I really had to get closer in order for the bread to appear that big and to take up room in the frame. One thing that I also noticed when I was shooting these scenes is that basically when I was taking photos with my phone, it didn't capture very well the shadows. Even though my scene was very much moody, overall the brightness of my image was much higher than what it actually was. And even when I would manually decrease the brightness using my phone, it just, it wasn't really working as well. I mean, we'll look at the photos and we'll see how, how it turned out. But honestly, shooting with my phone made me truly appreciate the people who are iPhone photographers, whether they're doing just like lifestyle photography with their phones or even more specifically food photography, just because I found myself really struggling kind of getting the images that I wanted to get. And maybe one of the things is that I just use the, the regular um, camera app. I know there are other apps that you can use on your phone to kind of tweak a little bit more the different settings. So like things like even ISO, I think, or depth of field. I know there's ways to kind of go around that, but I just used my, my camera off my phone just to make it more accessible to everyone. So now let's go onto my computer. Let's look at the different images that we shot and see how we can edit them and also kind of notice the differences between each of the images. All right, so I have selected the six images that we're going to be editing in the Lightroom. There's two images per camera, so let's take a look at them. This is the first image taken with my phone. As you can tell here, the image is really not distorted at all. I find it looks really good. I think it has to do with the fact that the lens on the phone is much wider and in overhead for some reason it wasn't really distorting my image. And so I think this looks really good. The one thing that I noticed um, shooting with my iPhone is the fact that it wouldn't always get the temperature of the image right. So I feel like I'm going to have to tweak uh, the temperature a lot more in this case to get the result that I'm looking for. So let's do this quickly. I'm just gonna make this a little bit warmer. I'll decrease the highlights, increase the shadows a touch, increase the whites, drop the blacks. I'm just gonna decrease the overall exposure of the image. I'll make it a bit warmer. Increase the clarity just a touch. And then I'm going to create an S on the tone curve. There's not that much information on the image because it is shot uh, with an in H-E-I-C. I'm guessing it's kind of like a similar to JPEG because I'm just seeing like that the range that I can modify the image is not as big as if I was shooting raw, for example. I'm going to decrease the saturation of the orange, the saturation of the yellow, increase the saturation of the red to kind of bring out the brown, drop the luminance, decrease the luminance of the blue, decrease the saturation of the blue because I feel like, again, the image is a bit too blue. Now I'm going to add a radio filter to kind of create a vignette effect. Press O to see what is being affected. It's quite cute already, it's looking nice. I'm not gonna add any sharpness, I find it's already quite sharp, this image. I might actually decrease the texture just a bit. That's one thing too, I find the phone captures a lot more sharpness. Uh, which can be good in times, but other times it could be a little bit overwhelming. I'm just going to decrease the exposure. I'm going to take away a little bit of the green. There's a little bit of green here, as you can tell. Decrease the saturation of that. And I'll decrease the luminance of that as well. And this is what it looked like before, and this is the after. I think it's kind of nice, actually. Like, I think we made it look really good. I might bring back just a little bit of um, texture, just a bit. And so what I'm going to do is copy the settings of this image and then we'll move to the next one. This is what it looks like. And you know when I was telling you that there is some distortion that is being created with the phone, you can definitely see it here. You can see how like these, the slices that are falling down are much, much, much bigger uh, than the loaf in the back. And again, you see that distortion as well with the mugs. The mugs, although they're further away, they look quite big in the scene. So that's kind of so-so. But we'll still paste the settings from the previous image. I'll just remove the radio filter because that might not be necessary. Here, I find that this image is actually a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to bring back the temperature just a touch. 
I'll add a graduated filter in the back to make the back a little bit darker and remove some of the attention like this. I'm going to do the same for this side here. Again, like because I didn't shoot this in raw, I find that the, the range uh, that I can modify this image is not as high, but you know, it, it's good enough. And then I'm going to crop this shot actually. I think I want, I don't know where, like this? No, that doesn't really work. Ah, uh -huh. guys, if you are shooting with a phone, honestly, props to you because it's not my strength. <laughs> but something like that could work, although you can see the little clip in the back. Maybe that. What if I add another a radio filter here and then I press O to see the area being affected? And I shake this a little bit and then I'm gonna decrease the saturation oops too much decrease the saturation just a little bit and yeah it's not bad again as I mentioned um, the distortion is quite apparent and that's why I find this image is not great so my personal suggestion is that if you are shooting with an iPhone or any type of phone I would suggest either looking into other apps that can allow you to play a little bit with the distortion and also with the brightness and stuff and the temperature in phone or really use your phone to shoot overhead because I find uh, that the overhead image is actually quite nice and turned out, it turned out quite well. Sure, there might not be like the most amazing quality. Like if you zoom in, you probably see that it's not like perfectly, perfectly in focus. There is still some, some grain, but it's good enough. I mean, if you're posting it on Instagram, the quality is, is quite good actually. So now that we've uh, looked at the images that are shot with the phone, Let's look at the images that are shot with my Fuji camera. So this is the first image. As mentioned, the lens on this camera is a, quite a wide lens, it's 23 millimeters. And therefore I was able, without um, stepping on the chair or something to, to be up high, to capture a beautiful overhead shot. And I think this already looks really beautiful. Let's just see, what if we paste the settings of the edits of the phone image onto this image? Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, it's super dark, but let's increase the exposure and see what we get. Okay, that's not bad. If we move the radio filter a little bit, we increase that exposure. It's actually quite nice already. Then what we're going to do is I find this image is quite yellow. So I'm just going to bring the temperature down so that it's a little bit cooler like that. And then this part of the image is a little bit bright. So I'm going to add a graduated filter right here and decrease the shadows, decrease the highlights. And this part of the image to me is a little bit too dark. We lose the information on what is happening here. So I'm just going to add a little graduated filter like so. Let's see in full screen. Yeah, this is really nice. Because I was shooting with a, a digital camera, I was really able to play with my settings. This shot was taken at f2.5. Therefore, you can see that not everything is in focus, only the most important part, which is the top of the cake. Anything that's lower than that, so the backdrop, everything else, is not really that in focus. Like you can still see what it is, but it's not super sharp. And what that does is that it really makes this bread pop and it doesn't look very flat. One last thing I'm gonna do is just increase the, the ISO just a bit and drag this a little bit more like this. And then this again is a little bit too bright on this side, so I'm just gonna decrease the highlights here and decrease the exposure just a bit. Finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of information back in the loaf here. So I'm going to increase the shadows and paint here. Yeah, that looks really nice. I think one last thing that I want to do is I find there's a little bit of a green hue to the shot. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm just going to increase the tint to 17 and put the texture back to zero. We had removed it because the iPhone shot was quite, quite sharp and quite texturized already. And yeah, this looks really nice. This is the before and this is the after.
before, after. Obviously, we can spend a little bit more time really tweaking the image so that it's more like to our taste. But I'm trying not to make this video an editing video. I'm just kind of like going fast through the editing process. If you want a more in-depth video on editing, just make sure to tap up here. I'm going to link a video where I go a lot more in-depth in terms of editing and talking about all the different panels in Lightroom and all the different edits that I do on my images. Let's jump to the second image shot with my Fuji camera. If I paste my settings, this is what I get. Okay, this looks quite nice. However, if you notice, we get a similar type of distortion as with the image shot with the iPhone. I'm just going to put them side by side for you to see. Obviously, they're not the exact same format, but the Fuji image, um, you can tell again that the slices of the loaf appear much, much bigger than the loaf itself. And I mean, I shot quite a few different images and I always kind of had that type of look it has to do with the lens of the camera. So I think this illustrates quite well that the lens that you choose to do your photography really can impact the final result that you get. So I don't think I'm going to change anything in this shot. Oops, in this shot. Uh, I think it already looks quite nice. Maybe just add a little bit of brightness on this side just so that it's a little bit brighter and maybe just crop it a little bit like this. Like that. This is our final image. It's actually super sharp. Honestly, the Fuji camera is an amazing camera. If you are looking for a camera to use for lifestyle photography or like to take with you on trips, if you're, you really enjoy doing street photography, this one is really great and although it is a fixed lens, it works in a variety of different settings, but I have to say that it might not be the most ideal one for food photography. And last but not least, let's look at the images shot with my Canon camera. This is one of the images. I mean, can you see the difference? I'm just gonna put this image and the Fuji image side by side. And you see how, yes, the angle is slightly different, but it's quite similar and the effect that we get is very different because it is a lens that has a much smaller focal length there's not that distortion that you get in the image so let's edit it i'm just going to paste the settings that i did on my fuji camera onto this shot and see what it looks like whoops <laughs> nope that's not gonna work i feel like instead of pasting the settings i'm just going to restart the editing from scratch i'm just going to reset this i will increase the exposure here like this uh, drop the highlights, increase the shadows by quite a bit, increase the whites, drop the blacks, bring the temperature a little bit cooler. Then we're going to play with the tone curve, drop the shadows, increase the highlights. I feel like I have way too much orange here, so I'm going to drop this, oops, drop the saturation of the orange just a touch. Same with the yellow, but I'm going to increase the luminance. I'm going to decrease the saturation of the blue. And yeah, I think that's about it for now. Then I'm going to add a radial filter around here where the focus is at, and I'm going to decrease the shadows here just a bit. Like that. And then I'm going to brush a little bit onto my area of focus so that it just becomes a little bit clearer. The shadows are clearer. But I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit because I just want to increase the, the information in the shadows but remove some of the highlights. I find there's quite a lot of uh, highlights going on on the chocolate there. And then this part I find is a little bit too bright so I'm going to make it darker. And same here. And the back I'm going to also decrease. Yeah, that looks good. And last but not least, let's look at the last shot taken with my Canon. Ta-da! Wow. Yeah, that looks really nice. I really get the texture of the bread here. That looks, it really comes out nicely. Uh, I'm just going to make the back a little bit darker decrease the highlights a little bit more add some blacks yeah i think that is our winning shot guys <laughs> the last one had to be the best one i think this shot is really really nice uh, the textures really come out 
beautifully. I shot this at an f2, which really allowed the background to be a little bit more blurry and to, for the focus to really be on the zucchini bread. So now let's look at all the different images that we shot. So this is the first image that I was shot with my phone. This is another one, more of a close-up kind of textural shot. This was shot with my Fuji camera. Again, with my Fuji. This was shot with my Canon. And this was shot with my Canon. I think you can probably tell which camera I'm the most comfortable using in food photography. And that is definitely my Canon ADD. That is the camera that I use for all of my work. Uh, and the 50 millimeter lens is a lens that is one of my go-tos. And definitely because I'm used to shooting with that, that setup, I know what angles work best and I know how to really make my food look good with those two pieces of equipment. And if I had to choose my three favorite shots from each of the cameras, it would be this overhead shot from my iPhone, this overhead shot shot with my Fuji camera, and this shot taken with my Canon. Well, that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I took one setup and shot it with three different cameras. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And also, I'd love to know what camera are you shooting with? And uh, to all of you phone shooters out there, props, seriously, I've said it a few times already in this video, but I have discovered a newfound respect for you guys because I struggled taking photos with my phone. On that note, make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.